I'm Adil Kumar. Welcome to my series on trigonometry. Let me first thank all my subscribers and viewers. Today is a landmark day. We have crossed 30,000 subscribers. And I'm glad to see that we have students from universities and schools all over the world now. About 50 countries being represented. Uh, and let me thank you from the bottom of my heart for contributing with such excellent questions, sharing your test papers, assignments. That has given me a lot of exposure to the topics which I discuss. Now I'm slightly changing my method. I'm introducing a new series where we'll talk about many things at one time. Now this series on trigonometry, pre-calculus at some places. Some places it is grade 11 and 12 curriculum. Now we will discuss sinusoidal functions, trigonometric identities, trigonometric equations, dealing with compound angle, double angle, half angle and inverse functions. So what I've done here is that I've included a question bank. So in the question bank we'll have multiple choice questions, knowledge based questions, communication questions and application and thinking questions. Now in this video we'll begin with sinusoidal functions and we'll take 10 multiple choice questions right that's the whole idea i like you to explore and look into other series with my question banks uh, i'm not able to organize the things well since uh, alone i can't do much soon we'll be putting up something together with some friends and i hope you'll have a better experience of watching my videos so now let's begin with the multiple choice questions based on sinusoidal functions. Now, as I go through, I like you to pause the video, copy the question, answer, then look into my suggestions, right? So we have 10 multiple choice questions here. Question number one. Okay. Uh, many of you also want to know which pens I use. You're impressed with my pens. So these are the pens which I use. So normally I write with black and blue and I do make sketches with these pencils. These are actually permanent markers, pretty good. So nothing specific. Whatever is there on sale or there's a deal, I just go buy them. All right. So that's the whole idea. So I hope you've got an idea of the pens which I use. Now I think we can begin with the knowledge based questions. Question number one, if the function f of x equals to minus two cos three x minus pi by four plus one has amplitude a, period p and horizontal shift s, then which one is the right option? So I've given you five choices with amplitude, phase shift and uh, period. Now before we answer, it is good practice to rearrange the equation. You will understand why am I doing so because when you rearrange you can clearly read. Now 3 should be factored out. That is critical step. Once you factor 3 we get x minus pi by 12. Now we know what phase shift is. It is pi by 12. Okay. Now I think it becomes very simple to answer this question. Now if you don't do this particular factoring then you will land up with wrong answers which are related to pi by 4. Is that true? Right? Sometimes you may make that mistake. So clearly we are looking for phase shift to the right pi by 12. Is it okay? So that is what it is. Now time period p can be calculated from this value. So values are in pi radians. So we'll set 2 pi by 3 divide by this. Right? So that gives you the time period p. And this is to the right, right? This one is pi by 12 to the right. Amplitude is always positive. Remember that amplitude is always positive value. So never write negative 2. Correct? So that gives you the answer. So clearly, we have our answer as option A. Correct? So where amplitude is 2. Hope most of you must have got this one. So let's now take up the next question. The equation of the figure below is what? 
So that's a sinusoidal function. We have given four, five possible equations. How do we get the equation for this? So pause the video, select the right answer, then look into my suggestions, correct? Okay, so first thing is you should look for the axis, right? So the axis here is at minus two. Okay, so axis is minus two, we know axis equals to minus two. That is y equals to minus 2, right? So you can write y equals to minus 2. Okay. Now let's look into the amplitude part. That means from the axis, how high are you going? So, so from the axis minus 2, you go to 1, which is 3 units. So you know amplitude is equal to 3. So, okay. So 3 is common. Perfect. Uh, now, the critical part here is we are left with time period P. So let's say time period uh, will give us k value. Is that okay? So k is equals to 2 pi, 2 pi, since everything is in pi, divided by the period. Is that okay? So to get the value of the period, we have to look into two maximums or two minimums. Now, the graph of this function doesn't really clearly show it. Uh, but you can estimate, right? Uh, so what you can do here is that uh, check with this value. So it seems to be pi to be the time period. Is that okay? So so it is 2 pi by pi. So k value is 2. Well, 2 is common. So, so you know, 2 is correct, right? Okay. Now we are looking for phase shift. If I'm considering the sine function, let us say, sine function starts from here right so positive sine function starts from here so that is one value or negative sine starts from here do you see that negative sine starts from here most of the options given to you are in the form where we are written 2x now what i will like to suggest here is think like this the first equation for example should be read as sine of Two common right x minus pi by 6 minus 2 for example right now you have to factor this so pi by 6 is your phase shift got it so if I'm writing minus it is to the right side so uh, well so in this case if I move right side pi by 6 I come here from here sine wave is actually moving downwards so I should have negative this fits in for negative now this is pi by 2 so if you divide it into three equal parts you probably get pi by 6 correct so one third of pi by 2 is pi by 6 so option b is the right option All right so it is tricky kind of so look for the right equation i will suggest first write down the equation from the graph and then match your solution is it okay now let's move on to question number three. Question number three is range of the function. So, well, domain is all real numbers, so we will concentrate on range. Now here, the axis is at minus two, right? So, uh, I mean, the axis is at five. So we know axis is at y equals to five. So this is your axis, right? From the axis, you're going two units up and two units down. Do you agree with me? So that minus 2 means axis is 5. And you're going from there 2 units up and 2 units down. So this is, let's say axis is at 5. You go plus 2 and minus 2. So where is the maximum and minimum? Maximum will be at 7. Minimum will be at 3. So it is from 3 to 7. Perfect. And therefore, the answer is E. Is that clear? So you can find range from this. Now some of you may like to rearrange this equation. You could write this as f of x equals to minus 2 cos of 3 x plus pi by 12 plus 5. Do you get it? So now it's clear. From 5 you go 2 units up and 2 down giving you the range from 3 to 7. Is it okay? Now as a question. Uh, what you should do is, let me write question 3b, sketch. Let me write sketch f of x. 
Now that would be a good function to practice, right? So I haven't taken sketching question here, but this is uh, one which you could use for sketching practice. Okay, let's move on. And now we have uh, taken trigonometric ratios. We'll move to trigonometric identities. Question number four. Tan x sin x plus cos x equals to what? So let's try to write them in sine and cosine. So what we have here is uh, we can write tan x as ratio of sine over cosine x, correct? So let's do it. So we get sine x over cos x times sine x plus cos x. Now cos x is common denominator. So we get sine square x plus cos square x. Now that is clearly 1 over cos x which should be secant x. So we get option A as the right option. Right? So this trigonometric ratio is equal to secant x. Here is question number 5. It is very similar to question number 4. I like you to pause the video answer and then look into my suggestions. But let's write them as sine over cos for tan. Tan x is sine x over cos x plus here we'll have multi layer of fractions. Secant is 1 over cos x. Tan is sine x over cos x. We have common denominator of cos x, right? So you could write this as sine x over cos x plus now we can take common denominator, so we get 1 plus sine x over cos x. Now this goes in the top, so we have sine x over cos x plus cos x over 1 plus sine x, correct? Now let's write this as cos x times 1 plus sine x cross multiply sine x times 1 plus sine x plus cos square x open this bracket sine x plus sine square x plus cos square x over cos x times 1 plus sine x now sine square x plus cos square x is 1 right so in the numerator I could write numerator as let me take it to this side I could write numerator as sine x plus 1 divided by we have cos x times 1 plus sine x now that cancels so what we get here is 1 over cos x which is secant x okay so that is how you could actually get the result so now let's move on and take question number six. Question number six. Which of the following is not an identity? Five are given to you. Now such questions could consume a lot of time in a test paper. So it is kind of uh, necessary to understand the equations and then try out the ones which could probably lead to the correct answer. Right. Now here, what do you see amongst these identities? We have secant x equals to square root of 1 plus tan square x. Right. So, but the square root is always positive. Do you see that? What we understand is that square root or whatever, it is 1 plus tan square x, which you can write as secant square x. But the value is absolute value of secant x. That means always positive. Is that okay? But secant x could be negative. And therefore, this is not an identity, clearly, right? So, as we know, secant x is negative in these two quadrants. Correct? So, if you take any value which is between pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2, you'll get negative value. So, therefore, this is not an identity. Perfect? This is not an identity. Now, this is only true in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 4, not in 2 and 3. Perfect. So, by inspection, you can actually answer such questions. Don't try to 
prove each identity. That's what I'm trying to say. Fine. Question number seven. Which of the following is symmetric about y-axis? Now, symmetric about y-axis means we're looking for even symmetry. Where f of minus x is equals to f of x, correct? Now, this is not symmetric, right, because this is translated towards the left side. So, cos x is even, but when you translate it horizontally, it is not symmetric. Tan x is basically odd symmetry. Now, here we know this is uh, odd divided by, that is also odd. So, odd divided by odd will give you what? That is going to give you even symmetry. So, this is definitely our answer. Here, it is combination of odd symmetry plus even symmetry. So, it's neither. Here, what we have is we have even divided by odd. So, that will give you odd symmetry. Do you see that? Now, so we definitely get sine C as our answer, right? If you want, you can prove. So, but don't waste your time in a multiple choice question. You should kind of do it, right? Like this. Now, some of you can actually prove it. So, you know, uh, sine of minus x over minus x minus tan of, I mean, minus x is equals to minus sine x over, this is negative x, this is negative and negative makes it positive, which gives us negative sine x over negative of x minus tan x, right? So they, then you can write this as equal to f of x sine x over. You started with the main function sine x over this, so this is equal to f of x. So we got f of minus x as equal to f of x. So you could also prove it if it is in a descriptive or communication based question. Okay, so I hope that is clear. Now some of my students uh, doing MCR3U are not very clear about even symmetry. However, with this example, I hope they have learned. Now let's move on to question number eight. If x is between pi by two and pi, that is to say we are working in quadrant two, right? So that means quadrant two. Then tan x is what? Then we know tan x is negative. This is important to understand. So we have to get negative answer, okay? Now, so we are looking for tan x as negative. This is basically sine x over cos square x. That is not the answer, right? This is cos x. So this is negative sine x over positive cos x. So that gives you negative tan x. Is that okay? Now, in quadrant 2, tan x is expected to be negative and therefore that becomes the right option. So this is option B. Correct? So the value of tan x has to be negative and therefore we get that as our option. Question number 9. Cos of pi by 2 plus x is not equal to which one? So we are talking about co-function identities now. So, okay, so we are looking at cos of pi by 2 plus x means somewhere here, right? Somewhere here. Now, this is pi by 2 plus x. Now, cos is negative in this portion, correct? So, that gives you an idea of what answer should you be checking. So, this is cos value is negative. If I do 3 pi by 2 minus x, then we're looking into this place where cos is negative, so this is equivalent. Minus sine x, this is a co-function, it changes to sine, and since it is negative, minus sine x makes sense. If I write pi plus x, sine pi plus x will also be in this quadrant, so that is going to be negative, this is correct. Cos pi by two minus x. Now, if I say cos pi by two minus x, I am in quadrant one. Correct? Here the value of cos is positive, so this one is not an equivalent expression. 
So therefore, cos pi by 2 plus x is not equal to cos pi by 2 minus x. Sine 2 pi minus x will be in this quadrant. That is fine. It is negative, right? So this is also equals to minus sine x. This is right. So that is how you get your solution. I hope you've understood the concept that should make your job of selecting the right answer much easier. Here is the last question on multiple choice basic trigonometric functions. The coordinates of point after rotation of 300 degrees about 0, 0 from point 5, 0 is. So basically we are given point 5, 0 here as rotated kind of like this, right? So and you reach uh, some angle 300 degrees. Let's say this angle, right? So that is 300 degrees. So the point here was initially 5, 0. That means radius is 5. Is that clear? Now what is this point? So we know r is equal to 5 and any coordinate is basically equal to this point image, let's say p dash. Let's say this is the point p. The image of this point will be 5 cos theta and 5 sine theta. Is that okay? Now what is theta? Theta is 300 degrees, acute angle being 60 degrees. You can look into your special triangle, correct? Which is uh, 60 degrees triangle, where the sides are 1, 2, square root 3, correct? So, so here, in this quadrant, we know x value is positive. So this value is positive. Y value is negative. Correct? Y value is negative. Perfect. Now, 5 times cos of 60. Cos of 60 is 1 over 2. So it is 5 over 2. And here, negative value, sine value is square root 3 over 2. So 5 times square root 3 over 2. Correct? That becomes the coordinate. So that is the right answer. Let's look for the correct choice now. So we're looking for positive and negative value. Option C is the right option. Correct? So that is how you get your solution. So I hope you have understood the basic concept. We'll not take up uh, more questions based on uh, application, communication, and thinking where the answers will be descriptive. So I'll put it into another video. Well, that brings us to the end of our session on multiple choice questions based on sinusoidal functions. I'll take up knowledge based questions, 10 questions in the next video, along with few communication and application questions. And then we will have similar series involving compound angle formulas, double and half angle formulas, and then I'll have a separate series on inverse functions. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. And if you like and subscribe my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching. And I highly appreciate your contributions in making this YouTube channel an excellent one. Thank you.